Hi, everybody. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. And I'm Jason. And we're the Hula Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad that you joined us. Today is the first day of the day that we are commanded to start our weekly work. And today we are going over Leviticus 26. We are going over the commands of Yah and what he has told us to do and everything he has in everything he's given us. All right, thanks, Eli. Uh, Eli's super shy. He doesn't really like to talk a lot, but he does really good. He did a, a sermon last night. I was super proud of him. Um, it was a really good one. Two minutes, and it's amazing what you can get in two minutes of the scriptures. What's it was, he like? It was only 55 seconds. Oh, it's 55 seconds. Even better. So uh, for anybody with the goldfish uh, um, capabilities out there, this one is for you. Now, it is a first day. It is a day after Shabbat, and it is a day that we are working. And before we begin, I'd like to go into a little comment here, and I'm going to, first of all, read it, and then I will let, one at a time, I will let you guys decipher this. So this is interesting. This is from Daniel Eid Yeshua Hamashiach. I, or Eve, Yeshua Hamashiach. Um, now, this is on Todd's newsletter, and this gentleman is very upset about uh, Brother uh, Paul, Shaul, and um, there's something probably everybody should know is the Christians have created, actually it's not the Christians, it's the Catholics, that created this huge um, spoof that uh, Brother Shaul was killed at the end of Acts 28 or something of the sort, that uh, he, that he was a martyr for Yah or something of the sort. And um, it actually, they forgot a chapter. And there was a chapter, chapter 29 was actually added, and you can find it in the Sefer. And in this end of it, uh, Brother Shaul travels off to somewhere else, and at the end of it, he's like, peace be unto you and everything, amen. So Brother Shaul didn't become a martyr like everybody thought he was, so he didn't actually die like everybody thought, and so that is yet another hoax that we have um, been uh, perpetrated in. And, you know, there's, there's something that everybody has to understand. If you have a little bobblehead Paul doll, and you decide that that is your God, and you think that your bobblehead Paul says that you can eat bacon and you can live lawlessly, then you might as well get down on your knees and worship the bobblehead doll because that is who you have made your Elohim. And that is incorrect. And so let's read this and, and you guys can, we'll, we'll nail it. So this is what he starts off saying. He's, he's quoting from Galatians 5, 4. For if you are trying to make yourself right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut of from Christ. I don't even know if that's what the verse says. I don't think it's well, cut. It what should, is it? It's Galatians well, five four. He said he says he says you've been cut. I think it's supposed to be off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. Okay, so if you're uh, <laughs> this guy is saying right out of the gate that if we are trying to keep the law, we are falling out of the grace of God. And I, I, hey, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but let's let's talk about our life and our experience. I know you guys don't want to talk about this, but when you fall out of grace with your pops. It's a bad deal, right? Right. Right. And so we're having these little conversations this morning, and um, it's it's not a good thing, right? If if you guys do not obey what your dad says, what does he do? Uh, he gets angry. How angry? Uh, it depends angry. on depends on how bad the disobedience was. Yeah. What 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 happens? What what how's the house how's the house feel after there's a disobedient stint, Eli? Um, everyone's in like a bad mood. And everyone's sad. It's, it's sad. Everybody, nobody likes reproof, right? Reproof. When iron sharpens iron, it wouldn't be called iron sharpening iron if it was like iron sharpening cotton, right? There would be no no thing there. But when we are sh we are to be sharpened, we have to study our, our to show ourselves approved. What does that mean? Study ourselves approved, Eli. Uh, study and do what he has told us to do. Basically. Yeah, and when it says rightly dividing the word of truth, what does that say? Okay, do you, they want to have Galatians five four? What does yeah. that say? <clears throat> And I wait, I'm going to start in verse 3 because it's like, it's not just one verse, it's both. You can't take your bobblehead Paul and take one verse out of it and, and worship that Elohim. It's so bad I'll, news. Does. I'll start in 3. Okay. It says, And I witness again to every man being circumcised that he is a debtor to do the entire Torah. You, have, you who are declared right by the Torah have severed yourselves from Mashiach, and you have fallen from favor. For we, in Ruach, by belief, eagerly wait for the expectation in, of righteousness. Okay, so nowhere in there, see, this guy, I don't know where this, NLT, I don't know what version that is. Let's continue on with what he says. Anyone saying that the Apostle Paul contradicts Jesus, I don't know who that is, who's Jesus? He, his, this guy's name is Daniel Eved Yeshua HaMashiach, but he still uses Jesus. 
So anyway, it's Yahushua. There's no J's in Hebrew, and it's not Jesus. That is, it's you're yes. saying Jesus, right? <laughs> it's all a big game. Son of Zeus. Yeah, son of Zeus. So Paul contradicts Yahushua, or the Father ought not to be teaching Scripture. Anyone saying that the Apostle Paul contradicts Jesus, or the Father ought not to be teaching Scripture? Okay, so he's saying that Todd should be teaching Scripture, or us. To exalt yourself higher than a man who is, was chosen by God and snatched to the third heaven and giving revelations from Jesus himself is madness. Paul suffered and was killed for the gospel. To think you have a better understanding of scripture than a first century Pharisee rabbi who was taught Christianity by our Lord Jesus, Lord Yahushua, Yeshua, and the Ruha HaKadosh, and not by men. There's no words to describe the audacity of that type of spiritual pride. All right, spiritual oh pride. This is all. This is what I said. This is this is the programming. This is the deep programming of the Christian religion. You are led to believe that you can live a sinful life, that the laws of God are no more, that it does not matter. The laws are on the cross, guys. What 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 do we have here? Anyone? Paul does not contradict the Bible. To those who are wondering. He writes in a very different way than what you've read throughout the Bible. You can read all the way from Genesis all the way up to the Gospels, and it is very different than when Paul starts writing in. Because he was learned, he was learned in writing, he was learned in different types of uh, languages, he was learned in different types of religions. But he was a, let, let's, let's get this right off the table, being a Pharisee makes you a very evil dude. It makes you a, let, let's let's talk about the Talmud. This, and this guy's, Pause this if you have youngsters right here. I'm going to say something kind of graphic. The Talmud says, and it has in the Talmud, and these Jewish people, the Pharisees, will circumcise a child at eight years old, and they will suck eight on... Days. Eight days. Sorry. What did I say? Eight, eight years. Oh, yeah. Eight days old. And they will suck the foreskin. They will suck the blood of a circumcision. All right. Unmute it. Um, that is what the Talmudic... Jews did. That's what they still do. There's videos all over that you can find. You can find them on 153news.net where they actually perform this and it's like they, they do that and they suck the blood and they take a drink of wine or something afterwards. This is a horrible, horrible, evil thing. This is a disgusting, evil thing. Now, Pharisee rabbi, or you're not supposed to call any man rabbi. You're not supposed to call any man father. Um, so, you know, why would, if you were a first century Pharisee, you are a very evil person. Probably the most evil. You're the one that started this all. Yeah, yeah, it's a religious sect that is not following the Torah. Pharisees and Sadducees and all of those kind did not keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. They have 25 books outside of the laws of our Creator that are just evil. There's evil stuff in there. You are less than a human being. You are what they call a goyim. You can be stolen from. You can be literally robbed, and you can literally be raped. There's there's things inside that book that says if you are a goy, you they have the capabilities of raping them because they're less than human people. Now these are the same people that walk around in black and white today and have the white zit seats, and there's nothing good with them. Now Brother Shaw, it looks like he changed his ways, right? He went and started preaching. Brother Shaw did not die for the gospel. Brother Shaw lived off wherever it was. I don't, we don't know where he died. But we do know that it was a hoax where they said it, he did. So, Eli, anyone else? Come on with this. What, what, do, does, um, I mean, this, this guy's like, this I mean, Paul we're, is we're his God. supposed to be teaching, everyone was supposed to be teaching the Torah. That's, yeah, right. They were supposed to go out into the world and teach it because the people didn't have it. And that's what we're doing now. Yeah. And it, it makes zero, none of this makes any sense. And I, I, I've quoted scriptures of this guy. Another guy in here quoted this guy, um, I guess the other guy, I guess you could delete his comment. No, it's on the other one. It's is not it? this one. It's the other one. Oh, okay. And then this is what I said. I said the, pro, the Christian programming is deep in this one. And then I, I just quote scriptures, right? Um, and, you know, the scriptures are simple ones. Think not that I come to destroy the Torah of the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For amen, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one yod or one tittle, in no wise shall pass from the Torah till all be fulfilled. So everybody's saying that heaven and earth is gone. And, you know, if you want to serve Paul as your Elohim, I guess that's what it is. And I guess that's what you will do. And um, there's nothing we can do except try to be kind, gentle, and try to reply to these guys. And um, it, it's it's sad. It is really sad that the, the world is, is in the shape that it is in. Okay, so let's, um, let's get into the lesson today. And, Cole, do we have... 
Um, you added some stuff, or did you do anything at the bottom? I didn't do anything at the bottom. Yesterday. You did flesh out. I worked on the dietary laws. Dietary laws, and those are under. Fifty-four, fifty-six. All right, sorry guys, it's gonna go spinning here. Fifty-four. Uh, fifty-four. Oops, dang it. And obey Yah's diet is fifty-two. Okay. okay, so fifty-two. She fleshed this out a little bit. Is it? Is it? Complete? I think that one's done. Okay, so the dietary laws, we put this under this, and it says, Speaking of the children of Yashrael, saying, There are beasts which ye shall eat among the beasts that are on the earth. And then she dialed this in, and then A, B, and C. This is what we can eat. These are unclinged to you, A, B, C, D, E. And she did a wonderful job on there. Um, and then dietary, is this the whoever touches the carcass? Is that under dietary? Yeah, that's still under dietary. Okay. It's still under Leviticus 11. Okay, so it should, that should probably still copied under uh, hygiene laws as well, okay. I would imagine. Um, because, yeah, clinging the carcasses. All right, and then the hygiene laws, she's still fleshing out. Those are kind of tough. And then we actually made it back. We will make it back to Leviticus 5 because we do have places for all of that. All right, so let's get into this. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. good. Seriously, how good. you doing? Everything good? Yep. With Leviticus 26. Uh, I didn't do my handy-dandy split screen. <gasps> Let's do the handy dandy split screen. I need a little theme song and some drum rolls and stuff. And split screen. All right, got it. Okay, Leviticus 26. Let's see what we got. Reward for obedience. Oh, reward for obedience. Oh, that sounds great. You know, because um, you know, nobody wants the there's blessings and curses, right? You either get blessings or curses. And so the obedience reward for obedience is gonna be blessings. So let's go in this. Let's begin. Ye shall make no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am Yahuwah Elohim. Okay. That's a command. That is a command. Um, a, status, a stone image is what it says mine. Is all the statues throughout the world. I mean, there's idols pretty much everywhere. Dude, Lady Isis is in North America, you in got, Babylon. Yeah, everywhere. There's the Statue of Liberty. You got statues of... Everything, everywhere, like you got Abe Lincoln in marble or whatever it is up on the uh, Washington D.C. Marble? He's like, isn't he made a statue made out of marble? Oh, there, everything's made out of marble. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking like Marvel or something. I'm like, oh man, they've gone to the dark side of he superheroes now. No, um, yeah, everything's made out of marble. It's made out of uh, what is that other kind of granite? Lots of lots of stuff made out of granite. And then if you guys notice, um, Lady Liberty, the 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 woman on, across all the waters, um, that's actually a dude. If you didn't look at that, Lady Liberty is a dude. It came from France back in the day, and there was it's a huge Freemason thing. Um, it's actually a dude. So Lady Liberty is a dude, Liberty. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter in this world. All right, so we got that as a command. Don't we have one already that says? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's like one of the top ones somewhere in twenties. All right, now next. Ye shall guard my Shabbats and reverence my sanctuary. I am Yahuwah. So that's more adding into it. Nicole's got a busy day for Nicole. All right. Three, if you walk in my statutes and guard my commands and do them, okay, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Those are huge commands right there, right? That is that is our provider, and that's, that's why... Our daddy just isn't a um, an amazing creator, but he's an amazing provider um, because he provides all of this stuff for us, right? And we, we talked about that yesterday when we were talking about the sixth year and that he, he creates enough food for three years. So in that one year, Yah can make Yah can make whatever he wants to grow amazing. We could have a 500-foot watermelon if he so chose. All right, so five. And your threshing shall reach into the vintage. And the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. Safely, Very good promises. Very good. And I will give peace in the land, lying down with nothing to fear, and the Shabbat of life. Through evil, be a part of the land. There is no sword to bring in the land. Okay. So what does that say right there? Mine, verse 6, doesn't say Shabbat. I don't see the word Shabbat. Uh, let's see, what do we have? And so in the king, it says, And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. Eyes closer to what I, mine says. Yeah, and the Shabbat of life, so nothing to fear. Uh, let's see. I will grant peace, this is the NIV on the right. I will grant peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. So, I mean, Shabbat is, I mean, peace, rest, I think. <laughs> Um, essentially is how that translation, I think, came out. I will remove wild beasts from the land, and the sword will not pass through your country. Seven. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. 
and five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. These are great promises. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. Yeah, and that, you know that's how you know the land of Israel right now is a is a God forsaken cesspool. Um, the abortion clinics are all over the place. I mean, it, it, Yah is definitely not with these people, right? He, you're not going to be multiplied when you have you know 15 abortion clinics in this little itty bitty tiny place. It's super tiny, and they, you know so they're not under these these blessings. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. So that's interesting right there. Does it say soul in yours? And my being shall not reject you. It's interesting that, you know, if, if you're looking at the qualities or what makes Yah, we are created in his image, it appears that he has a soul as well, which is very interesting. Okay. And I will walk among you. You will be, you and, and will be your Elohim, and ye shall be my people. Wow. That is, that is amazing. I mean, what... Do you guys want Yah to walk among you? Yeah. Is this is your life represent the life that Yah would walk among you? I mean, are we doing what it would take that Yah will walk with us? And this is for everybody out there. This is not just a question for everyone at the table. This is for the, for everybody. You have a creator who's saying he would walk among you. Is he going to walk in a trash heap? Is he going to walk in in disgusting? Is he going to walk if you're unclean and you're living a vile life? You know, we want our creator to walk among us. So we got to be clean. We got to be right. I am Yahuwah Elohim, which brought you forth out of the land of Mitram, that ye should not be their bondsmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Now, those were great. So this is the punishment now. Wake up, kid. <laughs> but if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments... And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning agoo. What does your say? Mine right. says inflammation. <clears throat> and I shall appoint sudden alarm over you, wasting disease and inflammation. Yeah, you know that. You know we just that's very interesting that we picked that last guy. Uh, what was his name? Something I Yeshua. Daniel uh, is Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, Daniel had to shoot. So Daniel, if you, you probably never listened to this, but if you did, um, if you do not listen to the laws of God, he's going to own you. And it's not going to be a, a pleasant ownership. It's going to be a horrible thing because our creator has given us plenty of time to take care of this and to do this. So let me start on 16 again. I will do this unto you. I also will do this unto you. I will appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning agoo. And that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. Ye shall sow, see, sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. All right? And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursues you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Ah, uh, Daniel, don't do it. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. There's a million ways to be cursed, right? If you're, all of your grass dies, all your plants die, everything you have, you have nothing. You have nothing left, right? It can all be in vain. And, can, and better yet, and if you walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven more plagues, seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. Wow. So we just took, we took a 14 times beating and we're still disobedient people. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your not high ways shall be desolate. So maybe we got cursed. Maybe all our cattle died because of the wild beasts. Of course, they weren't killed by wild beasts. They just kind of died on their own, but um, I guess that's not our curse. Maybe. All right. 23. And if ye will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times, yet seven times for your sins. Wow. There's 21 times greater beatings. 
from our Elohim. This is not good. This is like boils between the legs you can't walk on, right? This is like uh, back so bad you can't stand up. Everything. Is your health completely owned? Are you are you in the law, statutes, and commands? Are you under the protection? I mean, this is something we, I mean, this is very important. All of you guys, listen. If life and everything is going to, to what do they say? Life's going to pot, as they say. Um, you're in a pothole. You've, you've dug yourself in. How do you get out? Well, you would start by by seeking Yah, seeking his commandments, right? Is your health on the lines? Is your life on the lines? Is what's what's happening? Um, it's it's just bad news. Why it says, then I will walk contrary to you. Anyone here? Raise your hand if you want Yah to wa walk contrary to you. Anyone? Nothing. Not even the dog paws. Nothing. The nays have it. Yeah, the nays have it. Nobody wants Yah to walk contrary unto us. That is a bad, bad, bad thing. All right. And I will bring a sword upon you. That shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you. And ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Wow. That's terrible. Who's, who's ending up with pestilence? Who's ending up in the hand of the enemy? Right? It's, it's, all, it's all over the world. It's worldwide. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven. And they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. All right, I don't understand that. Anyone? That's okay, a mindset. Uh, instead of staff, NIV said cut off your supply of bread. Oh, when I cut off your supply of bread, ten women will be able to bake your bread in one oven. So basically the flour is so small, have a tiny you'll loaves. have an itty bitty loaf. Yeah. Why would it have ten women, though? What's with that? Because there's okay. that many people are baking, right? It's, it's, it's small enough that... Why would you have, if it's small though, why would you have to have more people bake it? It's just, I think it's more of an exaggeration of that. Like there's so everyone, many people, like when you have, like if you had 10 people cook a uh, bread, there's going to be a whole bunch of bread. But you if would there's, think there would be. But if there's like uh, 10 people and they bring you one thing of bread by weight, which is like probably just an average loaf, that's like really little. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and it says, uh, um, they shall deliver you your bread again by weight and you shall eat and not be satisfied. Hunger. Wow, don't fall away from y'all. And if you will not... For all this hearken unto me, but will walk contrary unto me, that I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Jinkies, we are 28 times this. Yeah, can you imagine getting 28 times more angry at us? When will we change our ways? When will we walk with Yah? Then will I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, even I, I will chastise you seven times for your sins, and ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Wow. That's pretty good. Eli, tough. jump in the pot, son. <laughs> yeah. Peace out. Get some salt and pepper and some carrots, and we'll have Eli soup or something. Um, that's... I mean, what does it mean, guys? What are we talking about? How is he going to eat the flesh of his sons and daughters? Uh, he's so hungry. That's why he's left for food. And he's going to eat his kids first? I guess. I mean, he's pretty toilet already, I guess. Oh, man. What does it say in a different translation? What's it say? I don't know. What's it say in that one? The other translation. 20, 29 says, you will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. That's mine says, too. Wow. <laughs> Eli, where's your arm? Oh, we got hungry. <laughs> oh, well, at least we saved your life. We got your arm, though. That was delicious. That's <laughs> awful. That is terrible. It's horrible. All right. Um, and I will this 30 and I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall abhor you and I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. I will, will not smell the savor of your sweet odors and I will bring the land into desolation and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. What does it mean? Why are the, why is the enemies astonished? So they're just completely destroyed already. This dude was These guys were tough. There's nothing left but smoldering carcasses up on Moloch or something, you know? There's like Moloch's tipped over and all these burning bodies on top of Moloch. It's crazy. Don't mess with Yah. Do not mess with this guy. And I will scatter you among the heathen. Oh, no. Even worse, we're stuck in the heathens. And will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Have you guys seen the city? You guys probably haven't seen the cities. Has anyone out there seen the cities of North America? Um, it started around in 2019, and... Um, it's never stopped. I mean, I've never seen anything now. Now in, in Seattle, I don't know how to put this right, but you have the uh, prostitutes fighting the prostitutes and the drug dealers fighting the drug dealers and the cops have just all stood down. I guess Seattle is like something out of Mad Max. Um, it's The world is just gone. Then shall the land enjoy her Shabbats 
as long as it lies desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Shabbats. So he's going to get rid of, he's going to take out the trash, right? And he's going to take you to the trash can. You're going to be in bondage at your enemy's place, and then the land will finally get rest. This is, this is amazing. Our, our creator is just so amazing. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Shabbats when ye dwelt upon it. Right? You didn't you didn't honor Yah. You didn't do what he said to do. And now he's going to take care of it one way or another. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faint a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee, as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursues. Wow, a, a leaf. They're so gonna, leaf stands to chase. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's that's the thing. You know, it doesn't take much to spook humans, but Yah is is in full control. And if he wants you to be scared of a a a, a, a boo in the middle of the night, he, he will totally make you scared. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were, before a sword, when none pursues, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. If they shall confess. Okay, so here it gets better, right? If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquities of the father with their transgression, which they have transgressed against me. And that also they have walked contrary unto me. Then what? And that I have also, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Yaakov and also my covenant with Yitzhak and also my covenant with Avram and I will remember and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Shabbats while she lies desolate without them and they shall accept of their of the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despised my judgments and because my soul abhorred their state statutes. So this is yet another one. You know, this is real interesting that we read Daniel's uh, little comment right before this. I mean, this is this is his chapter. He should really read Leviticus 26. But what would the Christians say? Uh, laws are gone. Ah, that's, 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 the the, that's the old covenant. That's the old man on the mountain. That's Moses. I'm not walking with Moses today. You, you got, We got grace. All right. There it is. Um, yeah, they abhorred his statutes, not good. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. For I am Yahuwah Elohim. Very, this is a crazy, this is a great chapter. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Mitzram in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their Elohim. I am. And Yahuwah. So he still had compassion on them, even though they did all these things. He like always has twenty-eight times. He's like, he's like, I'll still bring you guys back. I'll bring you guys all back. That's the thing. And then we have all these stiff-necked people. They're like, Ah, the laws are on the cross. It doesn't apply to us. Which law? Which law don't you want? Do you want to look at your mother naked? Do you want to have sex with your daughter? I mean, this is these are the commands that you are saying are on the cross. As vulgar as bad as that may sound, that is exactly what they are saying. If you want. <laughs> Which laws do you want on the cross? Oh, that's the, you know, you'd have a Christian saying, ah, uh, the laws are on the cross. You stab them and kill them. Well, that was murder. No, no, no. The laws are on the cross. That didn't mean anything. I didn't commit murder. The laws are on the cross. You guys see what I mean? There's not a, a you can't do this stuff. There's no such thing as laws are on the cross. 46. These are the commandments and judgments and Torah, which Yahuwah made between him and the children of Yashrael in Mount Sinai by hand of Moshe. Now, this is, again, the Christians will go, oh, well, he, he just says that. He made that between the children of Yashrael and it's in Moshe. It was by the hand of Moshe. Well, uh, let's look at what happened to the rest of you. If you consider yourself a Gentile, well, the Gentiles didn't exactly live throughout the Bible. There's no house of Gentile. The renewed covenant does not have a house of Gentile. There's no house of Christianity. There's no house of Catholic. There's no house of, of good people. There's no house of uh, we're trying to do the best we can without the laws of God. There's none of that, right? And the Christians have this grace Grace, grace, nothing but grace. That's all that matters. Brother Shaw says we shouldn't live under the law. And this, he came, this was a guy that had, Paul probably spent his entire life getting unindoctrinated, 
right? He had to get rid of all of his evil t Talmud that he had with him, and he had it memorized. He had the t he was the he was like one of the greatest students of the Talmud of all time. He was the evilest dude around, beating up people, taking killing them. I mean, he, that was his job when he was heading to Damascus. We just read this, right? He was about to tie some people up and bring them back, right? That was his job, and he went blind on his way to Damascus. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that our, our creator could have easily had Brother Shaul hanging out with Messiah Yahushua, right? He was around the same time. He was beating up the people at the same time Messiah was around. He could have very well tried to lay hands on Messiah if they had encountered each other. Why did they not have an encounter? Why didn't you, why did, why was it years and years later before Yah ever used him for, the, for the, the purpose he did? And he didn't use him so that you guys could have a bobblehead doll that you guys can get on your knees to as you're, as, yo, can I eat pork? Bobblehead doll, Paul is just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and do that. Right? That's, that's what it is, right? They have their little finger out and they're smiling at you. You can do what you want to do. And that's not what this is all about. All right. I'm getting a little fired up here today. So <laughs> we got to, we got to calm down. Um, gentlemen, do you have anything else? I'll take a breath. Uh, wrap it up the Torah is for all generations if it's not clear enough uh, read your Bibles you're not obviously reading your Bibles enough if you don't realize the Torah is for all generations not just all generations it's for all families it's for all people it's for everything that exists it is for a way of life it is our guidebook to life it is the only way forward and if we reject the laws of our creator who have given us life who have given us breath who has given who put us in the womb protected us for nine months in fire and water and gave us members and get and, and had us come out that is the most amazing creator ever you know i was looking at this one last thing i was looking at a papaya the other day and and as you cut it, the inside of a papaya open, right? It reminded me of a womb of a woman, right? The inside of it has uh, papaya seeds. Have There's just like a, a ton of them. There's like hundreds of them maybe in there. And you cut it open and there's just, there's a tremendous amount of seeds. And the creator created such magnificence in humans and in plants and animals and everything that we are all created in such a magnificent way that when these papaya trees fall, you have a hundred seeds that hit the ground and it just, it continues on. It's its own way of creating itself. Nothing dies off. It all has its own life. And that is what our creator wants. He wants to give us life. He wants to give us blessings, but he will also give us what, Eli? He will give us curses if we don't. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, absolutely. He will give us curses. All right. I think I'll get off the soapbox. Anyone else have anything? Uh, read your Bibles. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, read. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Big, big shout out to everybody in the family. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We love you. I hope you have a very good first day, and I hope you guys are reading your Bibles. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.